Welcome back to TK Tennis. Today we're discussing the three steps for customizing your racket. So let's start with what not to do. Most people when they get a new racket and they want to customize it, is they start adding lead into the hoop, either at the three, nine o'clock position or the 12 o'clock position. That's not where you want to start unless you like going on wild goose chases. Where you should start instead is using a balance board and understanding the balance of your racket. And here's why. Step one, is improving the balance point of your racket. All modern rackets had light by some degree. If it's a 27 inch racket, that means the balance point where this would start the raise would be exactly at the 13 and a half inch mark, which would be indicated by this line right here. So if this racket was evenly balanced, it would start the float. But no modern rackets come from the factory evenly balanced, nor do you want them to. Rackets always feel more comfortable when they're a certain degree head light. So the lighter racket you start with, such as a more beginner level racket, so a 285 gram racket, for example, which is usually like the MPL or the team versions, they tend to be only a little bit head light. Each one of these marks inwards is a considered one point head light, which is an eighth of an inch. So one point head light, two point head light, three points, four points, five points, etc. So the lighter rackets, 285 grams to 300 grams, they tend to be only a few points head light. When you move up to the 300 gram rackets, sort of the MP versions and the 300 gram rackets, they tend to be a little bit more head light, three points head light, four points head light, five points head light, something in that area. And then if you move up to a 315 gram racket, they tend to be even more head light. So as you notice a trend with all manufacturers is the heavier the racket is in terms of overall static weight, so if we we're using the scale, the more head light they make it. And there's a reason for that. Players like rackets that are more head light. If it was head heavy, the racket would start to feel like a hammer and you don't want that. Those rackets don't feel comfortable to play with. So what manufacturers do is the lighter rackets, they may be very light, but their rackets are a little bit more towards the head so you get enough plow through. And that's the theory behind it. So they don't make the lighter rackets very head light. While the heaviest rackets starting at 315 grams and up, they tend to be more head light because they know if the racket is too heavy and it's not head light enough, it feels uncomfortable. But I'm gonna put up a chart here on this video. And here's my recommendations for balance points. I believe that manufacturers, even when the racket comes stock, don't make them head light enough. And that applies to all the rackets, whether it's a 285 gram racket, a 300 gram racket, or a 315 gram racket, or anything in between. I believe they should be even more head light. And that applies even more so if you're going to be adding lead to the hoop. So the place to start in step one is let's make the racket more head light and use the chart to determine what balance point you want on your racket. So step one, the question becomes, how do you improve the balance of your racket? And the best way to do it is by adding tack into the handle. Many people will put silicon inside the handle as well. And of course you can put lead tape around the handle underneath the grip. The problem with that is it makes one, the racket handle thicker. And number two, you have lead that's right below your grip area. And I don't think you wanna be sweating and having lead right below your hand. So the best way to add weight and change the balance of your racket is if your racket has a trap door, which most today do, you can pull out the trap door and now you have a cavity inside. So now you can take your tack, which in this case we have nine grams of tack. So if we wanted to improve the balance point of this racket, we would take the racket on the balance board. If we wanted to add nine points headlight, so here's the balance point of the racket currently. I'm gonna place this cap right here because you want the cap to be added into the weight. With the cap installed, even though it's just sitting on top, you have a racket that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points headlight. So if I decide to put nine grams of tack inside, now I can start to move it to 10 points, 11 points and 12 points headlight. So that nine grams made the racket about three points more headlight. So if that fell within the specifications of what you're seeing in the chart, you wanna start by adding and changing the balance of your racket using tack. And the reason I prefer to use tack instead of silicon or lead is, you can see this already has tack inside. Is tack, you can take a screwdriver and you can push the tack in and if you want to change it, you can take the tack back out and increase or lessen the amount of tack that's in the handle. So step one, I believe, is the most important step 
for customization. Now moving on to step two. Step two is quite simple. Now that you've added tack into the handle, you just want to measure your racket in terms of grounds, your static weight of the racket. The good thing about adding tack into the handle is you've actually improved the weight of the racket or the overall mass of the racket, which is generally good, especially if you've added it into the handle because now you've improved the headlight balance nature of the racket, plus you've given the, the racket more mass in anticipation of eventually adding lead into the hoop. The only problem that you find here is, is if you're starting out with a 315 gram racket or heavier, once you start adding tack into the handle, you might start exceeding 330, 345. And unless you're a 50 player or above, I would recommend staying away from total static weight of 330 or higher. 330, 340 grams of total weight is really left to the highly advanced players that are 5.0 at the very least and in my opinion higher. So what you may want to do when you're choosing a racket is don't start out with the pro versions if you consider adding weight to the handle and to the head because it can quickly get much too heavy. Oftentimes your best bet is to get the 300 gram racket for most recreational players or even the team or MPL rackets so the 285 gram rackets. Those are considered platform rackets, either beginner rackets or platform rackets because when you start with a much lower weight racket, it gives you more flexibility on how much weight you want to add to the racket and where you want to add it to the racket. Because even a 300 gram MP racket, if you start adding a lot of weight to the handle and a lot of weight into the head, it can also start to get very heavy quickly and you don't have as much room or flexibility to add weight where you want it to. So just like this racket right here, this is actually not a Gravity MP, it's actually a Gravity MPL that's been customized. And that allows me great flexibility to experiment where my ideal swing weight is and what my ideal static weight is and what my ideal balance points are. So that's step two. Just measure and record your overall static weight. Now moving on to step three. Step three is the right time to start experimenting by adding lead into the hoop. So this is a swing weight measuring tool. I'll add a video onto the screen so you can see how it operates. Most people won't have access to a swing weight measuring tool, but that's okay. N knowing your swing weight, your ideal swing weight is great, but it's not an absolute necessity. Because now that you have your balance point right and your static weight and your mass of the racket is where you want it to be, now you can begin adding weight and lead into the three and nine o'clock positions or even in the 12 o'clock position. And you can start experimenting with two inch strips, three inch strips, four inch strips, and experimenting what is the feel of the racket and the plow through that you get from adding additional swing weight into your head of the racket. And eventually, if you have access to a swing weight machine, then you can go out and weigh it and you'll find out what your ideal swing weight is or what your preferred swing weight is. Some people might say, if you add lead into the head, you're gonna change the balance point. And that is true. But what most people don't realize, unless you're adding a significant amount of lead, is not going to affect the balance point that dramatically. So in this case, we have four inch strips of lead. And if you add these at the three or nine clock position, they won't even affect the balance point by one point. So yes, it affects balance, but it's typically about one point. So if I move it one point in and add the lead here, you'll see that it moves it. So those four inch, four, four inch strips typically move your balance point less headlight by about one point. So you can forecast that. Now, if you add it to the 12 o'clock position, it might be slightly more than one point difference in terms of your balance point. But by predicting or moving your racket a little bit more headlight in the beginning on your balance point, you can then forecast when you're adding more weight into the handle where your balance point is going to be. Those are my three steps for customizing your racket. What I can assure you is if you use this method, you will save yourself a significant amount of time and trial and error. The worst thing you can do is start adding lead to the head without first working on your balance and your overall static weight. If you take this process, you'll save months or even years of experimentation on the court figuring out what your optimal balance point is, static weight is, and modified swing weight. I hope you find that helpful. Please remember to like and subscribe, and if you have any comments or thoughts on how I can improve this process, please leave them in the comments. Thanks for tuning in.